So you join me here today at the Barbican Estate. With me I have a roll of Lomachrome Metropolis, which is, well this one is a medium format roll. It's a colour negative film and it's ISO 100 to 400. So you choose the ISO depending on uh, how punchy and how muted you want this film to come out. However that works, I don't know. I'm shooting on my Pentax 67 with a 105 f2.4 SMC. So yeah, let's see what this roll is all about. Uh, oh, horrible sound as I put it down. <laughs> I think this film should come out looking like Fuji Industrial, something like that. I'm not too sure. I don't really know who who they're trying to sell this film to and for why. I don't really know what the uh, the aim is with it. But I'm interested to see. I forgot about Lomography's 120 rolls. Worse than the shiny portrait? Much worse. So these aren't folded, look. <laughs> they send the film though, so you can't be made. Yeah. <laughs> Great, films. Great, Great films. Great films, but you need to uh, start folding them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So you can rate this film at anywhere between 100 and 400. So I think for this first shot, I'm going to rate it at 100, which I think should from what I've read online briefly, be more muted. So I don't know now, obviously, but we'll see if this turns out more muted than shots rated at 400. Lomography sent me a roll of their Lomachrome Metropolis, which is a color negative film that comes in both 35 millimeter and 120. And Lomography describe it as great for gritty street scenes and punchy portraits, which I don't know. I didn't really know what to expect from that. I read that on their website before I went to shoot the, the roll and it wasn't very, it's was quite vague, you know? <laughs> They're like terrapins. Chin. Pondering. <laughs> Pondering on how to take a photo that hasn't been taken already. Oh. Fuck yeah. it. I'm sure you could find very easily this exact photo on someone else's. Exactly. Account. So we can compare. On a Sony Alpha with a hand here <laughs> yeah. with a light bulb full of little fucking LEDs. <laughs> but not today. Three cameras on. It. He's got the Leica. Three Leica. He's holding the Leica. And then the other Leica. One wasn't enough. Well, you know what they say. I'll quote Chase Jarvis. The best camera is the camera. <laughs> the three that you have on you. The best camera. Oh shit. As Chase Jarvis once said, the best three cameras are the best three cameras that you have on you. Do you think he's got black and white in one and colour in the other? Of course he does. Yeah. Or oh, one of them's locked to black and white completely. You know what? I'm not taking this picture. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's a tightrope walk there. It's high, high, what do they call it? Forest high walk. What's the official name? This it's tightrope, but they don't. People who actually do it don't call it that. They call it uh, slack lining. Slack no, lining. No. High lining or something. Hi, yeah. Something. Drop your drop your names in the comments. <laughs> oh yeah, get me. 
That's actually so good. Wonder how this audio sounds. Just realised I've been shooting at 100 as well. Let's go up to 200. See what happens. I don't. This is what I don't. Probably get. nothing. I'm also nothing. scanning this, so <laughs> no one will ever know. That was an NBD. I was expecting, I was expecting it to be very contrasty um, and have weird color shifts and maybe have interesting tones that come through. But the film ended up being quite muted, so you can shoot the, you can shoot this film from 100 to 400 ISO. You choose the ISO, and the film's meant to be more muted at 100 at that end of the spectrum, and then much punchier at ISO 400. So I decided to shoot the first five pictures at 100. I took one picture at 200 actually in the uh, conservatory and then the rest at ISO 400 to see what they would look like, to see how punchy they'd turn out. And I couldn't really tell, to be honest, apart from maybe the highlights becoming more squished at the uh, 400 end, maybe yeah, just the highlights being squished and I guess it does look a bit punchier, but it's quite hard to tell. I mean, I'm scanning these myself, so the scanner's got its own meter. I'm adjusting the curves to get a good scan, trying to make them look consistent. So it's quite hard to actually tell the difference, but I think, I think it's just an ISO 400 film that you overexpose by shooting at 100 and by overexposing this 400 speed film it comes out more muted because you preserve the shadows which makes sense it's interesting how they rate it at 100 to 400 though because it does work it's just you don't see anyone else doing that yeah i mean i would always shoot it at 100 i like i i always i always overexpose my film anyway so my advice if you want it to look clean Shoot it at 100, I think. Okay, so we're about to leave the Barbican estate. I realized I shot all the pictures here at ISO 100. So I'm gonna shoot the rest at 400 and I guess the light is changing, but I'm interested to see what, what the change is in terms of color shifts, um, however it works. I'll shoot the rest of this roll at 400 and then hopefully we should see quite a good comparison on the different ISOs. So we're on our way to Canary Wharf to uh, stick with the Metropolis theme. Um, and we're taking the very exciting Docklands Light Railway which is always fun. We're on the wrong side of it. Didn't get to drive it this time. <laughs> the man in that show. The train man? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Is he sticking his head out the window? Yeah. yeah, that's the shit. So we've made it to the lovely Canary Wharf. Um, and so, as I said before, I shot all the other pictures on ISO 100. So I'm going to shoot all these at 400 and see if, they, see if it even makes a difference. Not like you're going to be able to tell because they're different pictures, but uh, this is the experiment. I'm going to take a picture of this, deciding what to expose for. I think a silhouette could be quite cool. So I'm going to grab this shot here and we'll see what ISO 400 looks like. I've 
made another video on Lomography Lomochrome Purple, which has huge colour shifts. All the greens turn up purple. And with that film, you can shoot it at the same ISOs and you get colour shifts, which is just from overexposing it. But with this one, you can't really tell. With the with the purple, you can really tell because the whole colour shifts. With this one, it just comes out a bit more muted, which is great if that's what you want. So it's up to you. It's up to you. I would just shoot it at 100. The colours of this film definitely match themselves to a sort of metropolis aesthetic, I think. I think they worked well in the Barbican estate and Canary Wharf, I think. Buildings look nice on it. It's got an almost clinical feel to it, like slight green, green tones. Feels clinical, like industrial which makes sense. That was my initial thoughts, getting the, the scans back and looking at them. It felt clinical was what was what I thought. But no, it definitely matches itself to a metropolis environment. I don't know if that's what they were going for with the name. I mean, it must be. I think it works well in a metropolis. So yeah, you could say it's a success in that sense. I didn't actually take a portrait with this role, although I did take pictures. There was people in the pictures, so I guess skin tones were actually present. You can't really tell, but I, I don't think this would look that good for portraits. I think they definitely would be punchy, but I don't know if they would be flattering. I wouldn't advise this as a as a portrait film stock, and I definitely wouldn't shoot any portraits with it. I think they could come out cool in a sort of lomography sense, um, but I wouldn't use it for any editorial stuff or serious portrait work. I think it's it's much more of a creative film, which is how Lomography describes it. So yeah, I, I don't think it would be too flattering as a portrait film stock. So my sort of muscle memory, I got so used to loading Fuji and Kodak films that I didn't line up the, the 120 line uh, when you're loading it. I didn't line up the line. So the last picture got got cropped which is fine, we sort of ran out of time anyway. So it wasn't the nicest picture, it was just a picture of a DLR train whilst I was waiting to get on one. So that's fine. I mean, that's something to look out for when you're loading it. You've also got to fold the film. I've said this before. Um, it's just a different different film. It's, it's not the same as Kodak. So just look out for that when you're actually loading the film. So I think this film does have its own feel, its own look. Um, it definitely works in a metropolis setting. I just don't know if I'm going to use this film for anything anytime soon. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then give me a like. Subscribe if you want to. Cheers.